Hey, welcome to the All Stars Cars Channel. I'm Glenn. Today's fun project. I'm going to show you how to install a wheel bearing hub assembly, one of these doohickeys, on the front of a Subaru Outback. Now, I didn't get the removal process on film, but I will show you all the suspension components that you'll need to know, give you all the proper torque specs. And when you hear a howling or a humming sound going down the road in your car, when these get really bad, they'll sound almost like an airplane taking off. You can kind of hear this one. That's not a good sign. And I want to show you exactly how to put these in. So let's get to the video. So this wheel bearing hub here is bad. It came off of the driver's left front. And I'm going to go over a couple things real quick before I show you how I got this out. And then we'll put a new one in. But anyway, this contains your bearing and then your uh, studs here, your wheel studs. And the wheel studs stick out through the rotor. And the way to get your rotor off to get to this is you have your brake caliper here. There's two uh, 14 millimeter bolts. And then that is attached to the bracket. And the caliper bracket comes off with two 17 millimeter bolts, which are back here. Anyway, once that's off, you get your rotor off. And this will be exposed. Right here is your axle nut. You need to get your axle. Where is it? Right back here is your axle, okay? Comes in through the back. Here's the boot, CV boot. Uh, this is a 32 millimeter. So you zap that off, get the axle out of the way by removing the two bolts that hold the upper knuckle here. These are the struts. The, this is the strut. These two bolts are 19 millimeter bolts and nut. Take that off, and then you can pull this whole knuckle forward towards yourself and then push that axle through. And then there are on the back four bolts, uh, I think they're 14 millimeter. They hold this on to the knuckle and in between that sandwich is this dust shield. So anyway, that gives you an idea of the setup. Let's go to the driver's side and I'll show you what's going on. So once you get all that stuff out of the way, this is where your bearing will be. In fact, let me grab the, the dust shield so you can see exactly how it's uh, it goes on the driver's side. That's my that's my seat squeak in here. Anyway, um, this goes on right there and there's four bolts that go right through here. And then you take your bearing, which is kind of narrow on the top. You see this here, the, the base is narrower than the bottom here. So let's flip this around. This would go like this. This goes in here, sits right in through the center. And basically, this is your setup and your axle comes right out through here. So to get this off, what you can do is you can beat the snot out of the flange here, just smack it. They have that bearing buster, I don't own it, that bolts right here to the where the lugs usually go, the lug nuts, and then you smack down and it yanks this thing off. But I spray penetrant in here and I'll take my air hammer and just start blasting it here and here, like all around on this flange. Let me show you this flange right here and eventually the vibration will loosen it. Um, that's, of course, you have your four bolts out of the back. Now let's spin this and I'll show you how that's bolted in. In fact, I could show you that with the new one because we got to do that in a second, but right back here, you've got four 14 millimeter bolts and they go right in, let me get out of your way. They go in right through here like that, okay? So it's simple enough. Once the axle's out of the way, it's pretty easy to get to. You can do this with the axle in place by pushing it back a little bit, but I was replacing the lower control arms here um, and the ball joint, which I have a video on. That was, this side was a nightmare. You do not have to remove your tie rod end, which is, a, I think that's a 17, no, that's a 19 millimeter nut right here. So you don't have to remove that to get this knuckle free, but you do want to remove the, here it is right here, this is your wheel speed sensor right here. Okay, that goes in through this little doohickey hole right there. And there is on the back of the wheel hub assembly, there's a magnet in here and it has like teeth almost, okay? That's called the tone ring basically is what it is. And that's saying like on off, on off kind of deal. And that tells the computer that, that the sensor here feeds information data to the computer. So for your ABS and all that, so it knows uh, if the wheel is spinning or locked up or what speed it's at. Let me get a little tool and I'll show you how you can see this uh, magnetic 
kind of strip thing in here. Thanks to FAG, I got my tool right here. Um, yeah, FAG has this handy little tool that allows you to see this magnetic piece in here. So if you watch this, you see how it's kind of like solid. I don't know, it's coming up on camera, but anyway, when I put it in front of the magnet here, you should see the teeth like magic. See that? I don't know if that's coming up, but you can see it there. So that way, if you have a uh, bearing, whoops, almost dropped it. If you have a bearing that does not have a hub on it, you don't know which side is which, you can reverse them by accident if you press them in or out. If you, do, if you decide to do it that way, um, this tool is very handy. So anyway, you just lay it on there and it shows you. Pretty cool, right? So there you go. Anyhow, let's get to the next step. So to save time, I've already cleaned up the inner surface here. This had rust on it. Um, it wasn't too bad to get out, actually, this, this bearing. That ball joint down there was murder, but I did get it. And anyway, uh, what I'll do now is let's install this. So I've got my uh, anti-seize right here. Let me bust a new hole. There you go. Fresh one. Ooh, look, it's just oozing right on out. And I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize right in here just to give the next guy a fighting chance. I always wonder why the factory never does this. I guess it's to save time or money or they don't care because it'll be out of warranty. But uh, just to help the next guy out, it doesn't hurt to put a little of this on here. You don't have to put too much, just a thin film, just to protect it from rusting. Probably by the time you got to come back in here, it's already rusted out anyway. So I don't know if it's worth the time, but... We'll try. Anyway, that's done. Okay, let me clean my finger off. Because I look like uh, look like I'm made of metal right now. Now, you do not want to forget your dust shield when you put this in because uh, you'll have to do it again. <laughs> and make sure the orientation is correct. These Subarus have like veins. It's kind of like a air director kind of deal that pushes in so this is how the driver's side goes you kind of hold that there get a bolt in your other hand this is where it pays to have three hands and then all we're going to do is take our new hub by the way i'm using a timpkin not one of those cheapo advanced auto ones that only last like maybe fifteen thousand miles if you're lucky this one fits in there nicely and i'll come through the back of the hub here. I'll show you in a second. Let me get this started. Hopefully my arm's not too much in the way. Put that through. Do not cross thread, of course. And I'll give you the torque specs for this in just a second. Let me just get a couple started here. Come on. What, what's going on here? It's fighting me. What makes it tricky is the dust shield is kind of uh, flopping around at first. I think that one started now. Yeah. All right, I'll get one at the bottom. All right, we're getting started. Let's cinch these up a little bit. These only get torqued to uh, 48 pounds, so we'll do that in just a second. Let me just get them. Dang, I lost my socket. Let me just get it started. Just get everything snugged up. Okay, now I'll get the torque wrench. Before we torque those bolts, let me show you why I'm replacing this bearing. So after I took, I replaced this axle. This is a new axle I put in back here. So the axle came out, and anytime I take an axle out, I'll spin the bearing just to see. And if you listen, it's making that funky noise. That's binding. So it's junk. This, you know, it didn't have wobble. Sometimes they'll be really bad, and the, the flange here will wobble when you do that. This one has a little bit, not too much, but um, yeah, that's not good. Arm is disconnected so that when I do put that axle in, if you notice here, I can push down on this and that'll help you a little bit. So 
that's just a 14 millimeter bolt right there no biggie so let's get these wow that one's still got a lot of slack there there we go 48 and we'll wait for the uh the click there we go come on go we'll go diagonal caddy corner it okay and one more that's good okay so that bearing hub is in now we're going to straighten the sucker out since you know what's going on back there. Ugh, that new ball joint's nice and nice and firm, not too stiff and not too loose. Anyway, what should we get next? So let's get our axle in. So what I did here, I don't know, with the, with the by the way, with the tie rod disconnected, it does make this easier to turn left and right. Instead of going in the car, you could turn the wheel left and right. So let me get you set up over here. See what's going on so here's the new axle I already stabbed that into the uh, transaxle but I put anti-seize on these threads might as well get the nut off right now this is a new uh, new nut it's 32 millimeter and you cinch or pinch these down cinch them I guess you call it and I'll show you that at the end but when you torque that anyhow I've got the uh, knuckle turned the car it would be like turning to the right real sharp so even if your tie rod end is is connected just go in there turn as far as you can to the right and for the left side axle anyhow the other side would be opposite and then I just grab this axle shaft try not to get too much in your way and let's see what I'll do here how am I gonna do this I'll push down on the control arm and then I want to swing the axle in as straight as I can and pull it towards me what I'll do is as I'm straightening it I'm gonna wiggle it a little bit. I don't want that boot to get damaged, that's for sure, by the strut. Come on, there it goes. Okay, and then over here now, on the front, we'll just take our nut, because we have some threads coming through, and we'll just get this started, just so it doesn't pull back on us. That's good for now. And we'll tighten that up in just a second. Let me get some more pressure on it. There we go. Now. What I'll do is I'm going to hook up the strut. So let's straighten this out. We'll push down on the control arm. Remember the sway bar link is disconnected. And what I did do before I disconnected this knuckle, I scored right here. I don't think you'll be able to see it. Let me zoom in. Right along here where the strut meets the knuckle, I have a Sharpie and I also scribed it. So give us a little reference. This is what sets your camber. So I'll wiggle this sucker in there. Sometimes it's a little bit of a fight. Here we go. I usually get the bottom bolt started first. By the way, the top bolt, these are different. This is, oh boy, I don't have much light right there. There we go. The top, oh, now you can't see what I'm doing. Hold on. There we go. The top bolt is an eccentric right here so it's kind of like out around where this one's just straight the lower bolt top one has a washer and this eccentric is when you turn this let me see if you get it closer when you turn it it will pull the top of the wheel in or out through that knuckle and that'll set your camber positive or negative camber so you do you know it's suggested after you do something like this that you do get an alignment and I'm going to suggest the owner do that because he has so many new suspension parts here. This thing is going to be like practically riding like new. So what you do is get that bottom one lined up. i got a pry bar here. And I'm going to put this right through here. Let's see if I can get this, get this set up here without too much struggle. I may have to get a... You can get a big screwdriver, or in this case, let me grab that. 
All right, I had to grab my favorite, favorite tapered punch. You could use a Phillips screwdriver if you want. So I'll just put that in here and line this hole up. There we go. So because it's tapered, it kind of centers things for us. Makes, makes life a little easier. Let me see, there we go. And then you can't, once you get that set, take your blow hammer, just give it a little tap, should go right in. There we go. And then I'll get the 19 millimeter nut on the back here started. Just so that one's locked in. And then before I torque these down, I'm gonna make sure that that alignment mark, that camber alignment mark is set for us there. So once you get the bottom in, the top one's pretty, pretty much cake. There you go, I just did it with my fingers. Okay. Bolts are in, let's snug it, snug it, snug yeah, let's snug it. Let's just get this snugged up. I don't wanna to get too crazy on top. You gotta to still set that camber. Bottom one, get us started. Oops, gotta be in full. There we go. Let me see where we're at here. The bottom looks good. Hmm, not bad. Let me get my wrench on here. See if we can spin this. So by spinning this top bolt, I don't think you guys can see it, but this strut is moving the knuckle this way, back and forth, left, left to right this way. So let me get that as close as I can. That's as good as I can get it by eye, right there. So what I wanna do basically now is hold this side of the bolt with my wrench and then tighten up this nut. snug and what I'll do now while we're right here I'm gonna get the torque wrench got my gear wrench my digital gear wrench torque wrench I like this a lot this one right here I did uh, I did a review on this years ago and it's been working it's been working real well for me so let me set this real quick gotta fire it up there we go Set to 114 foot-pounds, and we'll pull down till she makes some moaning and groaning. First she vibrates. I don't know if you guys will hear it, but we'll see. That's tight. Oh, we're getting close. Getting real close. There it goes. It's vibrating. That's it. All right, and let's get the bottom one, 114. Same deal. Come on. Usually you tighten the bolt, to, you hold the nut and you tighten the bolt, but in this case with that adjustable, that's not working too good. That's it, we're good right there. Let me double check. Yep. All right, so that part's done. So while I'm here right now, I'm not gonna tighten it, obviously. This has to go all the way. This is 162 foot-pounds, the axle nut, but I am gonna snug it. I have a 32 millimeter impact. So let's, let's tighten that up a little bit. Start right there. That'll be good for now. Just getting things in place. Um, what I can do now, since the axle's in and everything's good here, let's tighten up this uh, sway bar end link. Bring you over here for that. Got you sliding on a nice big block of wood. So here's the sway bar end link. These are 14 millimeter. I have them both loose, both nuts. It's the same top and bottom here. Let me just show you. I'll take it off. So this is it right here. And basically, I'll put this... Uh, well, what am I gonna do here? I'll set the I'll set the bottom one in. Let's see. It's kind of a tricky little process there. There we go. And I'll start the nut. Now these have I should have showed you guys, but on the end there's a there's a slot here for a five millimeter hex on the uh, OEM. So you can put an Allen wrench in there in the end if you can't get these to spin. You know easily the nut on and off you can just put that in the end so 
Let me get the top one started. And I'm not gonna bore you guys with that, so I'll get these snugged up. Because we go all out here at the Ostarks Cars channel, uh, five millimeter hex goes inside that bolt. Oops, get your ratcheting wrench on there first. That'll save a lot of time. And then put your Allen in there and go ahead and snug it up. I'd say probably about 25 foot pounds in upper and lower bolts here and you'll be good to go. Okay, that's 25 right there. All right, little trick is uh, make sure that that Allen, that hole, that hex is cleaned out real good before you try to put this in. There might be dirt and crap and rust in there. And if you don't get this in there good enough, well, she might strip out on you. While I'm here, I might as well put the tie rod end on. Like I say, you don't have to remove this to to uh, get the ball, the ball joint, get the, yeah. Well, in certain cases, you don't need to remove this either to get the ball joint out. That's true. Uh, like on the other side, came out like gravy. But this here, um, you don't need to remove to get the wheel hub out, or the wheel hub, the wheel bearing, whatever you want to call it. So let's get this on. This is a 19 millimeter, and I'll probably torque this down about 30 five and then get my cotter pin through there all right torque wrench is set to 30 pounds and once you get this torque stop check where the hole is for your cotter pin one of the most important things you can do is make sure that that cotter pin is in because it's really a safety issue if it's not so I've got this tie rod nut here, just about to 35 foot pounds. There we go. And I'm gonna line up the hole here for the cotter pin. And you hear my torque wrenches going crazy. That's all right. I don't wanna go too far, because once you get there, you don't wanna go back. You don't wanna loosen it, so. A little more, pretty close. So there we go, okay. That's in there. I don't know if you can see me doing that. My hand's probably in the way. But let me get my cutters now. And we will put this in position here. So, in fact, let me tap, let me tap this in a little, a little bit. Where's my hammer? Come on. Oh, man. I don't see my hammer. I'll have to use my ratchet. All right. I like to give it a little tap. Just to make sure it's in there, it's in that crown nut. And now I can cut it. There we go. I'll bring this one up. I like to fold this one over. I guess you can do this all different kinds of ways. But that's how I do it. That one's that way. And then the other one I'll cut short and then it's just bend it down a little bit. Okay. And there's a shot of that. Oops. So there's your shot. Hopefully it's not blurry. Right there. That's how we're looking. So next up, let's put this wheel speed sensor in. I uh, pre-anti-seize this bolt. It's a little 10 millimeter bolt right here, about an inch long. So that goes in right here. And I cleaned up the hub real good and put a little anti-seize on top. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, just to try to keep this from rusting in there. It wasn't too bad to get out. I Put a little bit of penetrant and jiggled and wiggled it with my pliers. Um, these don't go in very tight at all. Maybe, I don't know, not even seven foot pounds or something like that I would do it. Not much at all. No Ugga Duggas on this one. And let me get that set in there. And that's one less thing. So now, you know, our, our axle's in and our whale hub is in so this is going to sit right between them and it's going to read that magnetic strip we saw with the uh with that little tool you know 
and that's it I just got it snug where it's not going anywhere that's done and let me straighten the wheel I think I believe we're ready for the uh, brake caliper bracket caliper and our rotor So next step is our rotor. This one's pretty beat up, but the car's not getting a brake job right now. So I put a little bit of anti-seize on the back of the rotor, made sure it was clean, so it'll sit flush on our nice new uh, wheel hub here. And what I'll do now is grab the bracket for the caliper. The pads, the old pads are already still in there. I'll slide this on, and then we'll get the two bolts in. And we'll get those snugged up. That's two of these guys here. They're 17 millimeter, I believe. This one back here is a little tight to get to, but we'll we'll tighten these up. We'll torque these when we're done to uh, 88 pounds. So let me get that going. And I'll tell you why in just a second why we didn't. Uh, tighten up that axle bolt just yet because we're going to do a little trick to hold the hub from spinning while we tighten that thing down because that baby's kind of snug so let me I don't know why I'm doing that by hand when I got the gun right here I can just zip them in real quick can't get on that one we'll get a wrench Kind of tricky because this bolt up here on the top caliper bolt or bracket is so uh, close to the housing of the knuckle I can't really get my torque wrench on there too easily so I'm going to give it the old experience 88 foot-pound uh, torque with a couple taps here just making good good and snug uh, that's 88 right there wait one more done all right and then let me get the bottom one Torque to 88. Okay, we're set to 88. Let's get this sucker on there. Wait for the beep. And then the buzz. That's it. When you hear the buzz, you're good to go. Come on, what's going on now? There we go. Perfect. Next step, let's get a little bit of silicone brake grease on these uh, piston, face of the pistons here, caliper, or brake caliper pistons. A little bit there, a little bit here, a little schmear there, and we'll just uh, smooth that on. We'll put that in. These, these brakes, oops, these brakes, I just dropped my caliper bolt. These brakes here. These pads still have a little bit of life on them. They're probably like 50%, so. Take it off our bungee. Always support your caliper so it's not hanging by the hose. Uh, these slides are good. Make sure these slides move nice and smooth. If they don't, you're gonna get uneven brake wear. Uh, almost guaranteed, so. Let me put this back in here. All right. We'll line that up and then we'll, oops, sorry, bump the camera. We will, uh, come on, we'll torque these bolts here down to 20 foot pounds, these little ones here. And I've put a little bit of anti seize on them just to help the next guy. And then you might notice back here, this hose, I had to disconnect it to get some more room. We've got this one little bolt here that attaches to the uh, side of the strut. That's a little 10 millimeter. I'll get that torqued down too. Just a couple of foot pounds on that. We'll be all set. Snug, snug. So to finish this job up, except for of course putting the wheel on, we'll torque those lug nuts down to about 85 foot-pounds. 
um, we got to get this axle nut on there. So I'll take my punch, or you can take a thick like screwdriver, and I stick it right down in here. If you don't have a helper to hold the brakes, put it right. These uh, rotors have slots for cooling. I stick that bad boy right in there, give it a little tap, and now it'll sit against the uh, bracket, the brake bracket here, so it won't turn on us. And I am set at right there. I don't know if you can see it, 162 foot pounds. And we'll put the socket on. It's a 32 here. Let's get this going. Let me get this set up. And now I'm gonna have to get off my butt and push down and tighten this sucker up. So here we go. Oh boy. Uh, I see the wheels turning on me. I might have to go lock the steering wheel. Let's see, maybe not. It's getting close. Okay, so right there, we made it. Not too bad. And that's real important to get proper torque on that axle nut because you do not want to damage the bearings and, and any of that, uh, the axle or any of that, the CV joint or anything in there with extra pressure. Now, we'll take our punch, and right here, let me get you close up to this, and look at that, it's pointing upwards, perfect. So right there, we need to cinch this down. We're going to take that and pinch it. So basically, that's kind of like a, what a cotter pin does. It'll stop it from, from moving, from rotating. Let me grab my hammer for that. And we'll center this and give her a tap. There we go. And you don't have to go crazy on it. But you do got to get enough where it's bent down and won't come out on you. That's it. That's done. All right. Put the wheel on. And obviously get the wheel on the other side too. Take the jack stands out. Bring it down and take it for a test drive. Okay, back from the test drive, everything went smooth, no abnormal noises, no abnormal vibrations. As I was driving, the uh, steering felt good and tight going down the road. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, if you're going to be replacing wheel bearings, it's best if you can afford it in your budget to get a name brand because they last the longest. The aftermarket tend to fail earlier or sooner than later, I should say. And uh, you don't want to really have to do the job twice if you don't have to. So other than that, smash the like button if you thought the video was helpful. Uh, comments and questions down below. Don't forget to check out some of my other repair videos here on YouTube. Thanks for subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.